Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will see a few important interview questions for microservices. So by the end of this video, if you find the content useful, please give us a like and also don't forget to share it with your friends. So without any further delay, let's start. The first question is, what is a microservice? So the answer to this question is, it is an architectural style in which application consists of collection of services that are independent and loosely coupled. It is one of the most widely adopted architectural concept within the software development industry. In addition to helping in easy maintenance with loosely coupled components, this architecture also makes the development faster. Simply, we can say that a microservice is a part of application that can exist and operate independently and communicate with other components via network calls. Each service has a separate code base, which can be managed by a small development team. Services can be deployed independently. A team can update an existing service without rebuilding and redeploying the entire application. Services communicate with each other by using well-defined APIs. Internal implementation detail of each service are hidden from the other services. It also supports polyglot programming. For example, services don't need to share the same technology stack, libraries, or framework. Development team can see and select any technology more suitable for the functional needs. Tech stack of one service will not have any impact on other services. Like one microservice can be developed using Java, another microservice can be developed using .NET, and the third microservice can be developed using Python. Now let's discuss few benefits of using microservices architecture. The first one is decoupled components. So most of the components in application are decoupled, thus it becomes very easy to develop, alter, or scale the components. We can have separate teams for concentrating on single microservice, which helps in developing the component faster. Then there is continuous delivery. So continuous delivery is also a very important factor. Due to the decoupled components, continuous delivery can be done for different components. That is, we do not have to wait for other components completion for pushing some changes as the components are loosely coupled and can be deployed independently. It also makes application development agile. That is, changes can be accommodated at any stage in the development lifecycle. The main feature due to which this architectural style is in demand is scalability. If decoupled services are developed, then it becomes very easy to scale up and down whenever it is required without touching the other services. Next question is, what is coupling? It is defined as the relationship between software modules and how much one module depend on or interact with the another module. Coupling is mainly of three major categories. Modules can be highly coupled, which means highly dependent. Modules can be loosely coupled and modules can be uncoupled from each other. The best kind of coupling is loose coupling, which can be achieved through interfaces. On the similar note, there is another term cohesion. So now let's see that as well. Cohesion is defined as the relationship between two or more parts of the same module that serves the same purpose. Generally, a module with high cohesion can perform a specific function efficiently without needing communicating with other modules. So high cohesion enhances the functionality of the module. So we can say a better performing and a scalable application should have less coupling and more cohesion. The next question is, what are the drawbacks of using microservices? So just like every other architecture, this one also has some limitations. Let's discuss a few of them. So due to the complexity of architecture, testing and monitoring becomes more difficult. We also need to do a pre-planning that is very much essential if we want to follow this architectural style. It requires a cultural shift from traditional way of following the software development lifecycle. We need to follow the agile way. Cost associated to microservices is more than its counterpart monolithic applications. There can be security implications because multiple microservices will interact with each other and data will be sent through the network. So a very detailed and proper security measures must be taken. Lastly, as every communication will happen over the network, thus maintaining the network is also becomes more difficult with the increasing complexity of the application. The next very important question is, the interviewer might ask you to explain a complete working of microservices architecture. So in this actually interviewer wants to understand if you have the knowledge of all the components, not all, maybe most of the components and how they interact with each other. 
So in this, we can start the flow from client that reaches till the backend service and then provide the response back. And in between, we can try to explain what all components are there and what is their role. So let's try to explain it by using this the simplest architecture here. So here we have a client. So client is sending a request. That request will first go to API gateway and gateway is responsible for routing it to the correct service. Before that, API gateway will also check the identity for authentication and authorization. So after authenticating and authorizing the user, it will route the request to correct service, which is there in the microservices architecture. So after all the processing is done in the microservices, those microservices can interact to some third party remote services as well. And once the response is ready, that response will be sent back to API gateway from the microservices. And then the API gateway will send back the response to client. So in this, there are some more components like we have CDN, which is content delivery network and static content. And in addition to that, on top of microservices, we have service discovery and management. Service discovery is mainly used so that all the microservices, they can interact with each other and we'll be able to manage the application or service statuses. Now, this is uh, another very old and traditional interview question where interviewer wants to understand your knowledge of different architectural styles. In this, you need to state what is the main difference between monolithic SOA and microservices. SOA is service oriented architecture. First is monolithic architecture. So it is like a single big container where all the components of the application are bundled together tightly. It is usually built as one large system and is have one code base only. On the other hand, SOA or service oriented architecture is a group of services interacting or communicating with each other, depending on the nature of communication. It can be simple data exchange or it could have involved several services coordination for some activities. And lastly, we have microservices architecture. We have already covered that in detail in our first question. So where components are loosely coupled and can be independently deployed, that particular architecture is microservices architecture. Now let's see what are the different ways using which microservices communicate with each other. This question is very important because all the communication happens between the microservices is over the network. So we have to see and select which one is the suitable way for our microservices to communicate with each other. First is using HTTP or HTTPS request response mechanism. In this one service will send uh, an HTTP or HTTP request with or without some payload and to the target service. And then the target service will process the request and send the appropriate response, which is then processed back by the caller service. Another way is using web sockets. This is mainly done for the streaming purpose. Lastly, and very important nowadays, which is most widely used communication way between the microservices is even driven communication. So in this, a message broker or a queue is used in which one of the service will put a message and the other service will be reading that particular queue or topic or listening to that queue or topic. So once the message is received, the target service will process the request, creates appropriate response message, and again, put it on the same or some other pre-configured queue or topic, which is already being listened by the caller service. This communication is non-blocking and asynchronous in nature. If you see the earlier one, the HTTP and HTTPS request response mechanism, that particular way is blocking. So once a request is sent until the response is received, uh, the that particular thread will be blocked. But if we follow this event-driven communication, then this becomes a non-blocking and asynchronous communication. That is, the caller service will not wait or block till the called service sends the response back. The caller service will be free to do other tasks, and then the target service have once they have the response ready, they will put it as an event or message in the broker, and the caller service will read it again. This is nowadays most widely used way of communication. That is it for this video. So if you find this content useful, please give us a like and also you can share the video with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. Keep learning.